Quantum mechanics, the mysterious and complex mathematical theory used by physicists to describe the subatomic world. Despite its formulation over a century ago, it remains the bedrock of modern physics. Time and time again, it defies the attempts of physicists to push it to breaking point. But is this about to change? Can a theory based on uncertainties and probabilities really be used to describe the world around us? A world where objects and their actions seem so certain, so sure. I'm here tonight with Andreas Döring from Oxford University to discuss what he thinks the future holds for Schrödinger and his cat. Dr. Döring, welcome. It's likely that somehow or another pe most people will have heard of the terms quantum mechanics or quantum physics, but I doubt that many people could tell you what exactly it is or indeed what it's used for. So can you tell me, what is quantum mechanics? Quantum mechanics is the theory of atoms and smaller structures. It's, it started out as a theory of the spectra of atoms and it has expanded a lot beyond this. So today we describe the nuclei of atoms and, and the elementary particles and how they interact and all these things are quantum theories, quantum field theories are extensions of quantum theory. And there are some objects uh, we like Bose-Einstein condensates, which actually are much bigger than atoms, um, which also are described by quantum theory, but usually have to work, to work very hard if you want to get a quantum system which is bigger than the atomic scale. Sure, sure. And uh, quantum mechanics is often referred to as being mysterious and difficult to comprehend. Where do these difficulties lie? The difficulties do not lie in... Um, the predictive power, it's a very predictive theory, but the difficulties lie in the fact that quantum theory does not actually give us a picture of reality in the sense that it would tell us what's actually going on on this microscopic level. It's a very good formalism which allows us to calculate what we will see in experiments that we can p perform. So the mysteriousness is largely in the fact that there's no picture of reality arising from the formalism and um, other aspects which are counterintuitive uh, are that quantum states behave very differently from classical states. They show what's called entanglement, so composite systems of, of two components behave in a much more complicated way than classically, so even if you know um, the quantum state of the first one and the state of the second one, you do not know the full state of the composite system in general. Sure. Uh, and it is said that mathematics is the language of physics, and indeed, physics textbooks and academic journals uh, contain as many symbols and Greek letters as they do words of English. Uh, so this may seem strange to some, so why do we use maths? And how does one get from these pages of mathematics to describing our world? We use mathematics because it's actually easier to talk in mathematical terms about these things, and of course also much more precise. Um, it's basically still true what, what Galileo said, that mathematics is the language of nature. Why this is, is I think one of the really deep mysteries, and nobody really knows. It's just the most effective way of talking about these things and actually get uh, predictive frameworks and good theories of nature. So that's the reason. Sure, sure. Uh, and the advent of quantum mechanics in the early 1900s has allowed generations of physicists to make immense progress towards our understanding of the universe and, and deeper, grand unified theories, for example. Uh, but to what extent has quantum mechanics affected us in our everyday lives? Uh, does any of this have an application away from the blackboard to, for instance, healthcare, renewable energy, or our beloved mobile phones and iPods? Oh, it does have a lot of um, applications. I mean, one obvious one is, is uh, everything having to do with nuclear power, whether you like it or not, but this is purely based on quantum theory. Lasers are purely quantum theoretical devices. Also transistors, which of course are in every computer, can only be understood properly using quantum theory. Renewable energies, for example, if you think of, of solar panels, there's a lot of quantum theory needed to, to understand what's going on there and then how you can make them more effective. So it has a lot of very concrete applications in, in everyday life. When asked to describe a theoretical physicist, most would probably picture an Einstein-type figure with, with glasses, unruly hair, frantically scribbling equations on a blackboard. Tell me, how does this compare to how life as a theoretical physicist really is? 
well, we do sometimes frantically scribble on mostly whiteboards nowadays, which is a shame actually, because blackboards are nicer. Yeah. Um, this Einstein picture, of course, is kind of romantic idea that that's true, and uh, I think what's what's important to to know about physics and also mathematics is it's a it's a let's say very collaborative um, thing to do research. It's it's pretty rare that you um, have people working just by themselves. You are always part of a community. There's a lot of exchange going on, and um, the, let's say the lonely research uh, is, is um, pretty rare and actually it's, it's much more important to be part of a community and, and to to show your ideas, to learn from the ideas of others and that's much closer to how we actually do physics. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, and finally, if it is the case that our current quantum mechanical description of the universe is not the full picture, uh, then into what could or should the next generation of bright young physicists put their efforts into? It's always hard to give advice to other people and I can um, only say what I'm interested in personally. I think foundations of quantum theory and foundations of physics more generally have become more important uh, for two reasons. Um, first of all, there is this lack of progress towards quantum gravity or other theories beyond quantum theory. It's just awfully hard to make progress and these of course are questions which are very fundamental. But also, um, maybe at least from all the computer, uh, quantum computer business, um, this is a very pragmatic application also of um, quantum theory, but it exactly uses those features which are counterintuitive, like entanglement, and arguably, to really understand on the deep level what we can do with a quantum computer and um, what it can do better than a classical computer, we will have to learn more about foundations of quantum theory. So that's, of course, what I'm interested in. There are lots of other interesting fields, and um, so I guess in general people should look around and, and uh, get input from, from different people before they decide what they want to do. Okay, Dr. Doring, thank you.